Hello there lovers, uh, all right, welcome to, if I, okay, all right, there we go, welcome to another uh, live dog training, weekly live dog training, at the moment we're going live twice a week, uh, once on Fridays at, uh, today I'm going at 11, we'll try at 11, we'll see how it goes and also on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Welcome, uh, my name is Sara, I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owners. If this is your first time, welcome to the channel. If you are a repeat member and you are one of the members of this channel, thank you for being here. Feel free to ask your dog related questions and today we're going to talk about dogs and we're going to talk about uh, whether if it's possible to train dogs with, without the use of treats. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And also I'm gonna answer your dog related questions. Uh, hopefully you are doing well and everything is going well. And uh, I'm just gonna just check questions. if everything is working fine. And if you can hear me and if you can see me, just tell, let me know we, uh, we have Tamstar um, as well, everybody uh, seems to be listening to, hearing me and seeing me. Hopefully everything is going well. Uh, we have Tam. We have Pritosh saying hi. Um, thank you for being here. We have Pritosh, thank you. Oh, the, the cane course or the, the breed, you want me to talk about that, okay. And we have Homar, Homara, I believe that is. Uh, thank you all for being here. Ofar, uh, Ofer Aharon is here, Sahar uh, is here. Thank you all for being here and appreciate your time and your being here, taking the time to be here. Uh, feel free to ask your questions and let me know what is your dog's name, breed, and age if you have a dog. Um, let me know also in the comments area. That would be great. Uh, it's good to, for me to know. Elizabeth Caruso is here. Thank you for being here. Great to catch the show. That's great. Um, Somara. Somara. Okay. Got it. Somara. Great. Yes. That's a beautiful name, actually, Samara. Chow Chows. Okay, so we have some breed-related questions as well. So great to be here. Uh, thank you all for being here. Feel free to ask your questions and let me know where you're from and what is your dog's name, the breed and age, and everything else that you can share, right? And also, if you're doing well, you know, this, this is a very strange uh, time uh, that we're living uh, with, you know, all these things are happening in the in our world and uh, crazy things is, are, are happening. So, all right. So today I have uh, a good system going on. I'm just going to adjust the camera 
that's the only thing that is bothering me. All right. Okay. Okay, that's good. That's perfect. The sound is good. Everything is good. And we're going to share some videos today as well. We're going to watch some videos, maybe, possibly. And we're going to talk about dogs. Okay. One thing that I wanted to get started, um, first of all, to talk about is whether if it's possible to train dogs without the use of treats. Can you train a dog without treats? You know, surprisingly, when I ask this question, people, uh, they tell me that, no, it's not possible to train a dog without treats because I think one of the reasons that happens is because people are just uh, automatically uh, have been brainwashed by food manufacturers and by the society in general that as soon as you want to train a dog or you want to talk about training a dog, the first thing that it comes to your mind is treats. And we're just so automatically dependent on treats to use it to train the dogs that we forget that actually that's not the right approach to uh, training a dog. You know, training a dog is not by using something or doing something. It's Basically, it's a matter of you understanding that you need to make connection with your dog. And the connection you can make with the dog with, you know, using treats or food or things like that. The connection happens with one, the first thing is you spending the time with your dog. And spending time with your dog is one of those uh, toughest things, that hardest thing that dog owners can do. They are busy with everything. They're busy with you know life, with busy everything, with uh, you know everything that happens, especially in this day and age. And we we are not spending enough time, quality time, with our dogs. And that is what happens when you don't have enough time to spend with your dog. And then on top of that, uh, you're desperate to do something with your dog and train your dog and get results from your dog that there, therefore you start using treats automatically and it's a very uh, simple and easy shortcut to get the results that you want and the results that you get is not the perfect result it's something that you're getting a result for time being you get results right now but in, in a month or even in a week week or in a month or uh, uh, five two months, you, you, what happens is you don't get the results that you want. So be, it becomes a little bit stressful for you and stressful for your dog to have that connection uh, because you're depending on treats and in general, you're depending on something to get results. So what i suggest you to do is here's a challenge for all of you to try something new maybe this week try to do something with your dog without using treats see if it's possible it's uh, in the beginning obviously it is going to be hard it's going to be strange uh, it's going to be challenging but try it try it for a few days and ask your dog to do something without the treats see if it's possible or not possible at all. Don't give up. Obviously, the first few challenge, a few tries is going to be to be uh, either not successful or you're not going to get the results at all, or you're going to have a hard time. But try it for a few days. See after a few days what happens, if you're going to get results or not. Because the first few days, you're trying to figure out what to do and what not to do. And then after a few days, you learn about your dog. And that is the challenge that I'm offering you. Spend few time, few days with your dog without uh, involving any treats or food and see if you are capable of making that connection without using anything. And that would be my challenge for this week. So give it a try for a few days and let's see how you do. And let me know in the next uh, live session, let me know what was your challenges and what was the results are you up for this challenge let me know yes or no all right so let's get started on answering some of the questions so 
Okay, so, uh, Sumar, Samara, I think I'm pronouncing it right. Um, talk about chow chows. And also uh, we had uh, Prithash, uh, I believe, Kane Corso. Um, you know, one of the, the things about the breed thing is, let me see if I can do this. Um, so, uh, if we share, I'm going to share, there we go. Okay. So here's Kane Corso, right? So that's the breed that you want me to talk about. Let's start with Kane Corso. Uh, and then we have the other, uh, breed that you guys want me to talk about is Chow Chow, right? So there's Chow Chow and King Corso. So King Corso is right there, right? And uh, that's King Corso, Chow Chow. So one of the things that I want you to understand is when it comes to dogs and breeds, I don't want you to get too overwhelmed with the, the characteristics of the breed. You know, uh, last week in my uh, private group, uh, Facebook group, I asked, uh, for the past few weeks, I've been asking my members, uh, tell me about your dog's uh, breed characteristics in three words or less, right? And everybody different with different breeds, the, the three words that they've selected, two of those words were always the, almost the same. Fun, playful, uh, uh, and not listening, something like that, right? Fun, playful, non listening. One of the things that you want to understand about any breed, any breed that you select, whether you're selecting Chow Chow, uh, whether you're selecting King Corso, they are all good dogs. Dogs are good animals overall. They have been bred for humans by humans. So they are designed to do exactly what the human has asked it to do. Now, there are some difference between King Corso and Chow Chow, for example, or Dobby, if, right? Uh, or, you know, Roddy, right? If you look at it from that point of view, you know, there's a little bit differences of personality, but not much. They're all the same. I had a book of all breeds and basically it said the same thing page after the page. Hard to train, easy to train, less walk, no more, not uh, uh, too much walk, a lot of exercise, little exercise. They all need the same thing. As long as you have them as a pet, if you have a dog, as a working breed. So if you have a King Corso and you want to work it, that's a different story. If you are using this dog for working uh, related tasks, you have to train it differently. But if you have a Chow Chow and you want to work it, you have to also focus on what this Chow Chow is breed, bred for. So all these breeds, they are originally working breed and now they are pets what that means is they're pets they're living with us and they're living at home they're not working so they are all doing the same thing unless you're working your dog or your breed i i don't want to say king corso is like this and chow chow is like that uh, or pit bulls are like this or like that because it all depends it all depends on few factors. One, one of them is what do you want to do with your dog? Is it a pet or is it a working breed, working dog? You have to decide what you want it to do, what do you want it to be. So if it's a pet, you have to think of it as you have a, a chihuahua. You have, you know, whether it's a cane corso, whether it's a chihuahua, uh, chow chow, whether it's a, German Shepherd, it's a pet. 
it's a little little puppy that you want to play with and they want to have fun and they can do exactly what you want it to be, do and to be as a pet but if you're thinking of working them and making them to work then you go into details of what that breed can do so german shepherds have been bred to do protection uh, same as dobies they have been bred to do protection bullies have been bred to pull things to do things right chow chows uh, basically they have been bred to uh, work with human um, they're not working breed in a way but they have certain tasks that they can do basically chow chows are more of a companion form of uh, breed their task is to be companion so all these breeds basically when it comes down to um, whatever they are whoever they are what breed they are they're all they're all bred to do the same thing so you're not um, you're not expecting them to do something special if they are just as a pet if you're having them as a pet what that means is if you're having your breed of dog at home living with you 24 7 not go, not doing any type of special task or work uh, then you treat them all the same you know they are pl playful they are fun they're lovable they trainable all breeds are trainable as long as you take the time to train them it doesn't matter what breed they are you can train them as however you want what to, you know to do all the training tasks that you want so that is my two cents about your breed you know i don't want to say this breed is better than the other one because there's they're all the same they're all the breeds are all capable of doing the same thing capable of doing any task that you want some now if you go a little bit deeper into understanding breeds and dogs it all depends on their personality and their drive each dog has a personality special personality I have beagles uh, one of them is lay uh, uh, you know lay lay down you know it doesn't do much doesn't want to do much the other one wants to play and have a good time all the time so it depends on their personality one of them uh, have beagles i've already all, always had beagles for, for example one of them was always in hunting mode one of them uh, a, a squirrel can be walking right in front of him he won't even care right no breed no drive in the hunting or anything like that so it all depends it all depends what you get and you'd never know what you get unless you're a dog trainer unless you're a dog specialist unless you're a uh, breed you know specialty in into specialty breeding and you select exactly what you want a dog to do for you and you go and breed and select them from the breeder and get them other than that if you're a typical normal person who wants to have a dog and you select the dog they're all pets for you you know Hope that answers that part of the questions. Um, Sahar saying, thank you for uh, great responses. You are welcome. Uh, Ofer is saying, so Lizzie, five and a half months old beagle in recent weeks. So its name is, Re uh, it's a beagle named Lizzie. In recent week, forgot to sit command. It works well in training session with toy, but on walking around the house, we went back to pushing her behind to rewind. <clears throat> okay, I see what you mean. So my two cents here is, first of all, uh, don't have any expectation from a five and a half month old beagle. And a five and a half month old puppy, I don't want you to have high expectation. Have some a little or some expectations that's number one number two you're taking uh, your steps too fast so 
when you start training a puppy, you have to figure out, you also learn about the five stages or levels of training as well. The level one is in your bedroom, in your living room, in your house, in the, in the house that the dog is comfortable, relaxed, and uh, familiar with. Number two step is working your dog or training your dog in the backyard. If you're living in a house in the backyard, if you're living in an apartment building in the, in the hallways, right? In the building's hallway, hallways, that would be step two. Step three is um, front yard. So if you're living in a house in the front yard of the, your house or if you're living in a building, it would be in the garage, uh, and parking, uh, or in front of the building, right? Number four step would be the streets. You go from, you know, in front of your building, you start going in front of, in on the streets. You practice those. And then last part is the dog park. So from step one to step two, it may take you two months, three months, usually it takes a long time from step one to step two because it's a big leap, right? You're going from an environment that it was very uh, familiar, calm, and quiet, and then you take it to uh, the f backyard, and there's some distractions, you know, a bird flies by, um, your neighbor's dog or neighbors make noise, um, something happens around the uh, neighborhood you know something happens there are more distractions so your dog your puppy is gonna lose its focus so therefore you're not going to get the same result that you you were getting in the living room so from here to there is going to take a few tries you use practice in the living room and then you go to uh, backyard and try in the backyard if for a few days, you see, okay, this is too much. My puppy is getting distracted. We're not getting results. You have to go back and practice a little bit more in the living room until your puppy is fully focused on you. Not fully, but I would say 80%, 75%, 80%, maybe even 90% focused on you. And then you take it to the next level, which is the backyard. And then from backyard to front yard, it will take you a month because your puppy is now is more comfortable and familiar with distractions, therefore it's going to do better. So from all the rest, is the, the steps are going to get easier and shorter. But in the beginning, you're going to have a hard time going from one living room to step two backyard because it will take uh, uh, a lot of focus from the puppy to uh, dedicate that focus to you. Therefore, it's going to get distracted. You have to understand this and accept this because these are things that a puppy has to learn and get used to. And if they don't get used to it, they they mess up. And it's not that they they don't understand it. It's just the learning process of a puppy and the the ability of learning of a puppy is very short, and they they don't learn. As they learn fast, but when you add distractions, it becomes uh, a little bit harder for them to focus. So they lose focus. So they need, your task is to work on their focus. Uh, for instance, myself, I've been working on my own puppy, Annie, for a few, a uh, couple of months now indoors. And the other day I took her to dog park. I take her to dog park all the time. But the other day we were at the dog park and there were not many dogs around uh, because of this coronavirus going on. There are not many dogs in the dog park. And I decided to tr test and practice with her. She was 90% focused on me. There were some distractions that she was focusing on. But as soon as uh, she was back to me, she was performing perfectly. She knew exactly what she was doing because I was doing the same thing that I was doing in, indoors, outdoors. So don't expect much, um, but take those steps. Um, let me see if I can share with you. Actually, uh, I can do that now. Um, I'm going to share the video that I think you should be watching that. 
Um, here it is. How I, I call it how long it takes. Okay, how long it takes to train a, a puppy and the steps that you need to take. Okay, watch this video. It's called how long it takes for additional information. And next question is from Samora. I'm working from home now, given the situation, but I'm afraid of huh? uh, Zomara. Um, right, Zoma, Somara. Yeah, yes, Soma, Zomara. I'm working from home now, given the situation, but I'm afraid of what will happen to him when I leave, when I have to go back to work. Oh, yes, that this is. Uh, I think there's a follow-up to that too. Let me just see. Now, given the quarantine, they only give me authorization to take him for a walk, only 30 minutes, and I have to play with him as much as I can at home while I try to work. He's seven month old. Uh, his name is Vincent. Great. So you have a seven month old puppy at the moment, um, you're working at home and you're afraid what happens uh, when you go back to work. So there are a few options that you have. Uh, one of them is asking a friend or family member to come and, you know, one of the problems with puppies, uh, but it's seven months old, and let's say you're going to go back in at eight, nine, eight months old, it's still a puppy. They need to go out and do their business every two, three hours. You don't want them to hold their uh, poo, pee and poo, uh, and you want them to relieve themselves. So uh, it's good to let them to do that every two or three hours. So that would be my first concern. So physically, you need to allow them to relieve themselves and allow them to have that ability to uh, go out. Number two is depends on your work hours, depends on your work. Are you working eight hours, 10 hours a day? To leave a dog home alone that many hours, even if it's six hours, uh, it's it's long hours to have a puppy home alone. Um, that would be my other concern. You know, psychologically, dogs are in general a social animal. You know, they are social creatures they need that social interaction with humans and other creatures so if you leave your puppy home alone for a long time that would cause some you know mental and maybe even emotional uh, damage to your dog puppy so what you want to do is think of it this way so so you have the physical issue that you have to address and the other one is mental and psychological and emotional um, plus, they, you know, a, a, an eight month old puppy, right? They need to play, they need to have some form of outlet exercise. So, all these things comes down to for you to come up with a plan that you have to plan it actually now before you go to work. So, find a place uh, or person who can look after your puppy while you're at work. Um, Find a play a person or a company that does. I don't. I, I'm guessing you. I'm not sure. I'm remembering your name. I, are you from South Africa? Is the, are you from there? Um, I believe now you're saying us. But now at the moment you have to only you're allowed to walk your puppy for 30 minutes a day, and that's all you get. So. The play and all that the, the interaction, you know, and you see how much your puppy needs that, that interaction and play and all that. So you have to hire maybe somebody to come and, uh, you know, take care of your puppy. In this day and age, there are doggy daycares as well that you have to take, you can take your puppy there and let them play. Well, everything is different now. It's very hard for me to, uh, you know, um, predict how things are going to go, how things are going to work. It's very strange and difficult. You know, in normal times, if you had asked me a month ago or two months ago, what do I do with my puppy? I would say, take it to dog daycare, hire a dog train, a dog care, a dog service pro provider, um, 
they look after your puppy. That's that's one of the things that you have to invest. That that comes with owning a puppy. You know, uh, you can't. It's not realistic to have a puppy home alone in a crate or even in a home in free in a home, and expect in few months or few years to have a normal, well-behaved dog. You're going to cause a lot of mental, behavioral problems if you do that. To the best thing to do is think of it for the next year or half or even two years. You have to invest financially to allow your puppy because this is the age that they need all this. They need movement. They need play. They need social interactions. All this. And if you miss this opportunity, miss this age, you, you'll have a nightmare in a few years. So invest now financially if you can look after your puppy uh, and then go from there. Again, it, it is very hard for me to predict what to do and what not to do. I don't know in, in, in a month or so if there is going to be a, a opportunity for people to look after your dog. If, you know, people are social distancing, you know daycares are closed there many of doggy daycares in in for instance in our in our uh, community are closed me and one another daycare are open only and not many people are using these services either you know so it's all it's all i'm sorry it's just one of those situations uh, Tam Star, how do you teach your dog to swim? Hmm, <laughs> good question. Um, yes, so the first thing is that your dog has to be, uh, you know, water dog. And second, needs to like water. You can't force a dog to like water. Now, what you can do, you can invite the dog to learn to like the water introduce it you know take it to shallow waters see how it does does it enjoy being in the water for instance my own uh, beagle harvey he doesn't like to he doesn't he's not in love what with water but if i take him to a shallow creek or water he'll dip he'll dip in himself in in the shallow area just deep you know just up to his shoulder uh, and then that's it It'll just walk around a little bit and come out he won't go for a swim but i'm guessing if if there was a situation that i went in the water and i asked him to come after me he would come uh, i could introduce him and kind of gently let him get used to the water and swim but he, I'm sure he's not going to say, oh, I want to go in the water again. Unless there's a reason, unless there's something that is really motivating them to go in the water, they will go. If they're not water dogs, you can't force them. Great question. Marilyn, uh, my, uh, Marilyn Hollywood, thank you for being here. First time I've, uh, I'm guessing you're here, so thank you for being here. And if you are not uh, a subscriber make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon as well so you will get notified as soon as i post my next video my eight month old uh, pyrenees border collie is very destructive with clothes and bringing in wood from the garden <laughs> any suggestion uh, yes when when a dog does act, uh, behaviors like this Sorry, my allergy is up today. Uh, when a dog does behaviors like this, is sign a couple of things. One is uh, is bored. Two, it needs more mental and physical stimulation. So when you don't provide enough physical and mental stimulation to a dog, they become creative and they come up with creative ways to entertain themselves. Um, and destructive, when they are becoming destructive, that is a form of them releasing that stress. Uh, they get stressed because they're not getting enough um, mental and physical stimulation. Uh, so 
they get stressed and they uh, have these uh, destructive behaviors. So that is a sign that your puppy is stressed. And if it's bringing wood and things like that from the garden, again, is, you know, border collie cross Pyrenees, it's a, it's a, it's like, you know, working dog. This is a working dog mentality. So you have to understand that. And for working breeds, what I usually suggest is, since you have it as a pet, what I suggest you to do is provide 70% mental activity, activity, 30% physical activity. Uh, working breeds are more active mentally. So what I mean by that is, let's say Border Collie who's been bred for herding, right? If you watch them, they're not running like crazy after the, the goats or whatever they're herding, right? What they do, they just watch. They lower themselves and they just watch. And if they have to move, they move a little quickly and they just pause and move and direct and all that, right? So it's more a mental uh, activity for them, not a physical activity. Understanding this, it opens up a lot of uh, 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 options and it gives you a different way of looking at your, your dog. So you need to provide 70% mental stimulation. So mental stimulations are training, playing with games that uh, stimulate uh, the brain and uh, simulate uh, brain uh, me mental activities, um, playing games that it, it makes the, the dog to also get physically tired, but also ment mostly mentally tired. Uh, training is the best thing. If you could train for, let's say, half an hour a day, it drains their energy level down. That's one of the things, that's one of my goals on my channel, to encourage people, encourage dog owners to spend 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour a day, a day to train their dog. And when I say training a dog, now I'm creating a, uh, a mini series starting tomorrow. You can watch it on my channel. I'm going to talk about training and what it means and what you should do and training without the use of treats. Training is not going and going to the shop and buying a training pouch and training tools and treats. What treats, soft treats, uh, hard treats stinky treats, good treats, bad treats. That's not training. Training is spending 15 minutes, half an hour to, uh, with your dog, <clears throat> interacting, getting them to be active with you in more mental and physical uh, stimulation and getting that opportunity to the dog to learn from you during that half an hour that you're spending with your dog, getting them not only mentally and physically active, but learn something during that time as well. So for instance, if you're training your, if you're playing with your dog for half an hour, you're playing games or you're doing activities with your dog. In meanwhile, try to teach the sit, you know, improve the sit. A, a dog can sit, but tell them to sit for two minutes ask them to sit for five minutes. If you have a border collie, ask your border collie to sit for 10 minutes. That's the challenge that you may have in your mind that, oh, 10 minutes to ask my puppy to sit and stay. Yes, challenge them with easy games like that, which is easy for us, but challenging for them to a, for a border collie to sit and stay for 10 minutes. It's the best thing that you can offer that dog. It's one of the simplest and one of the best thing that you can offer that dog because you're asking it to work mentally. And if you, if you provide activities like that with your dog, the simplest things, just asking your dog to sit and stay for five minutes, 10 minutes, that's the best thing you can do to a dog. Simple. Don't complicate things. Don't make things to become a big mountain in your head, 
simple, simple things. And you'll see if you do those every day, invest half an hour with your border collie puppy, you'll see not only the destructive behavior is going to fade out, the, all the all the bad behaviors are going to start to improve. Great question. Um, his name is Spirit. Maybe I should take him on a long walks to very much. <laughs> so no, um, I, I didn't see this comment uh, beforehand. But walking is a good thing. You know, there's walking is a good exercise, but it's mostly uh, physical. Uh, walking a dog, if it's done properly, if you walk a dog properly, it should be 50-50, 50 mental, 50 physical. But most dog owners, they take their dog for a walk and it becomes 80, 90% physical and 10% mental. So what I mean by that, if your dog is sniffing uh, the whole time is 50-50, 50% mental, 50% physical. If your dog is pulling the, the leash and it wants to go somewhere and it's pulling and dragging you for half an hour, an hour, that is physical activity. The dog is just uh, stressed. It's not, it's not enjoying the walk either. So the walk, if you're going to walk, your dog has to be proper walk. It has to be decent walk in order to for it to be beneficial. And if you do it the wrong way, you're going to cause other behaviors to develop as well. And become more stressful, it become chaos. There's no benefits of walking a dog if it's pulling on the leash. I'd rather ask you not to walk the dog and play indoors than walking the dog. Great question. Uh, Elizabeth, I took my 10 months. Yeah. Yeah. Pritish, thank sir. That's the one, right? And then Marilyn. Yes, I, I read that. Yes. Uh, Elizabeth, I took my 10 month old mini poodle Timmy to a puppy kindergarten class where everything we taught our dog was treat control. Then I found you and have tried no treats, and it is simply not working. Uh, uh, and is that the. Con Wait, wait. Um, okay. It is like he remembers and is looking for treats. Could this be? Is there a follow up? Uh, okay. I understand the situation. <laughs> I understand the problem. Uh, so, one of my first suggestions for dog owners is. First of all, don't take puppy classes. Puppy classes are not an environment for training. This is a good environment for socialization only. Training should be done in an environment, especially if you have a puppy, in an environment that is calm, it's relaxing, is familiar, is there's no distractions especially puppies. Puppies are, they get distracted easily, fast, right? If you put them in a, in a classroom, imagine there's five, 10, 20 puppies in a classroom, right? I used to run classrooms many years ago uh, and I stopped doing that because I learned it the hard way. When you have 10, five, 10, 20 puppies in a classroom and you're trying to train, Chaos. Nobody learns anything. The puppies don't learn anything. The only thing that lear they learn in the puppy class is that we get fed. We get given treats. And whether the puppy sits or not, they get feed. We get treat. Whether the puppy behaves properly or not, they get treats. And the goal of a dog trainer in that classroom is to find out if you have, as a dog owner and puppy owner, if you have the best treats that can manipulate your puppy to listen and ignore all these distractions, which is the wrong form of training a dog. That is not possible. That is just not possible to train a dog. And when you do that, when you start 
doing the steps that you have taken, now you have an addicted puppy. You have an addicted dog. A dog who is addicted to treats, needs treats, and you are, in a way, drug dealer. You become a drug dealer for your dog because you have to provide treats for your dog. So go back to basics. Start from zero. Start from like you just met your puppy. You you don't know your puppy, your puppy doesn't know you. Stop using treats. Treats makes you, you and your puppy and your dog to depend on these treats. And that's one of the problems. That's one of the reasons why you are not, your puppy is saying, you know what? I need treats in order to perform. And if you don't give me treats, I give you nothing. And that is the worst relationship between a human and a dog. That is not natural, that is not healthy, that is not normal, right? And if you have a relationship like that, you've already dug yourself a big hole, right? So stop using treats and, and food and start watching my videos on my channel, okay? Go to, I'll share here with you, go to my channel, here's my channel, right? Go to playlist, okay? And then on the playlist, here's an example, how to train beagle without using treats. You don't have to be a beagle owner to learn how to train a dog without treats, right? I have other playlists that you can watch and learn. Uh, there's another one, dog obedience training using play and praise reward system. So go to my channel, go to my play, playlist and watch these videos. So when you click on them, right, um, you'll see several videos on the left side, on the right side. So watch all these videos, I'm gonna pause this, watch all these videos to learn, right? You can do it. It's doable, it's possible. Uh, I have trained hundreds, thousands of dog owners uh, without treats, and they're doing well. They're doing perfectly without the use of treats. So don't be afraid of giving up on treats and not using treats. So it's possible. All right. So Marilyn is, has a suggestion. Elizabeth, try a clicker as a step towards no treats, maybe. Now, the problem it, here's your, this is a can of worm open here. Clickers are also confusing, not only to the dog owner, but to the dog itself, because clicker adds another step that you have to learn and figure out the proper ways of using it in order to get results. So you wait until the dog gives you the behavior, and then as soon as it gives you the behavior, you click, and then you have to have the treat ready in order to feed the dog. So it's another step, another additional step. Step. I don't suggest for beginner, novice dog owners to use clickers, Yes, there is benefits into it. You can use it maybe later on if you want, if you become a dog trainer, professional, uh, not professional, but a, 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 a dog owner who knows how to train a dog, you can add clickers if you want. But believe me, I, I'm a dog trainer and never needed to use clickers. I only suggest dog owners to use clickers if you have a dolphin. If you have a wild animal, you can use clickers. If you have a dog, you don't need to use clickers. And yes, use affection as a reward. Play, praise. Play, praise, and affections are the only so-called tools that you're gonna need to use as a training reward or training tool. Kasi. C3, is that correct? If I'm, am I pronouncing it correctly? I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. C, 
I just got an eight month old cross bully and already have a Shih Tzu. And ever since I had the bully, I've been keeping them separate because I'm not sure the bully is dog aggressive. How do I go about this? So you have an eight month, you just got an eight month old bully now and you had a Shih Tzu with you, um, but you have been keeping it separate. <clears throat> So you're, if you're not sure how the, the relationship is going to go, one of the first thing is in the beginning, uh, keep them separate, yes. Second of all, maybe use one of those fences that the dogs can see each other, uh, get, they can smell each other, but they can't get hold of each other, right? So introduce them that way, you know, just controlled introduction. The other suggestion that I have is, if you feel comfortable that your Shih Tzu is 100% under control, you can control it 100%, then you can have your Shih Tzu off leash and have your bully on leash and, and introduce them. So how to introduce. So I'm going to share with you a video that you can watch. Uh, so how to introduce, I'm going to call it how to introduce. Watch this video where I show you actually how to introduce a dog to a pet that you have. So it would be in the chat area. So watch that video as well, okay? Marilyn is saying, some dogs are either driven by affection, treats, or toys. You need to find out which one works best. Good point. Yes, Marilyn. Um, I agree dogs are driven. You know, there are three things that are dogs driven, and you mentioned them all three. Affection, treats, and toys, right? I call them play, praise, and food. Okay, it's, it's the same thing, play, praise, food. But it comes in that order, play, praise, food. Food is the last thing a dog is motivated with. But as a dog owners, as dog trainers, as dog professionals, everybody is taking the wrong step. They go with food first, right? Instead of play, praise, and then food. So start with play and add some praise and if you don't get results, work on those two. And your last option, plan B, plan C should be food. If you don't get any results, I guarantee you, if you stick with play, plan one, A and B, which is uh, play and praise, you'll get results. But yes, focus on that. Oh, wow. Okay, we will adjust expectation was progressing well until last week. Thank you. Yes. Uh, there, there are so many things that can make you to not not get results from your training. Uh, various things can cause things to not work as well. So, you know, just figure out what it works, what is causing it. Cassie is saying the bully barks and lunges in his crate. They Time, the time that I bring the Shih Tzu around. Uh, it lunges and barks uh, because probably it's excited. You know, it, it's an eight-month-old puppy. I don't think, in my book, I don't think puppies are bad or dirty and are aggressive. Unless there's something really has, really something has gone wrong and your puppy is already aggressive. But if that's happening, I'm guessing it's more of excitement, wants to, you know, play with your Shih Tzu. She wants to, you know, interact with your Shih Tzu. So try either having a fence in between them or have your bully on a leash and Shih Tzu off leash if you have 100% control over your Shih Tzu. If you can control it verbally and you can manage your Shih Tzu, 
have your Shitu off leash and introduce the bully on leash. The other option I would say is ask a friend or family member to have your Shih Tzu on a leash as well and the bully on a leash as well. And then go for a walk, see how they react on the walks. Not indoor, indoor, maybe outdoor in the backyard or maybe around the block. See how they get introduced. The, you know, one of the things is that say, your bully is excited to see your Shih Tzu indoors, right? Oh, because that's the only thing that it's in the house. But if you take it back in the backyard or on the street, now your bully is uh, dis distracted with other choices and other uh, scenarios as well. So it's not going to be 100 focused on your Shih Tzu. So it's going to start focusing on other things as well. So in that level, in that situation, your, shih tzu, your bully is going to have a little bit either calmer approach to your Shih Tzu or he's going to completely ignore your Shih Tzu. And then you can have a better idea of how their uh, personality is going to be indoors, right? If if your bully is not attacking your Shih Tzu in outdoors and is distracted with other things, there's a good sign, okay, it doesn't care, right? But since you have just adopted your bully, I would suggest you to uh, watch, um, I'm going to share here. So you go to, again, my channel and go to my playlist and watch the, let me see if I can find the, uh, just give me a moment, I'll find the playlist that I want you to watch as well. Uh, adoption, this one, adoption and uh, re rescuing dogs. So that's the playlist that I would suggest you to watch. So there are a few videos there as well. Um, so go ahead and watch those. You know, the more you watch and more you learn, the better it is for you, okay? So the more information you have, the better it is, okay? So this playlist, adoption and rescuing dogs. Hopefully that those will help. Okay, where was I? Some dogs are okay. By fancy, okay. We got that. Got that. Narrowings. Treats are better. To start out with a quicker. Terra. Uh, okay. Wait. Uh, I'm coming uh, all okay treats are better to start out with a clicker then wean to either affection or favorite toy ball etc make sure you have eye to eye contact with your dog and only use the one word command these are techniques that most dog trainers they use right uh, and it's in a way not realistic to have this much expectations from a dog uh, because you know a, if you have an eye contact with the dog it doesn't mean that you have connections the dog doesn't have to look at you in order for you to say my dog is connected with me a dog when it's looking at you that means it's expecting treats that's the problem when a dog becomes addicted or dependent on treats it will look at you but if you don't have treats it won't look at you dogs don't have to have you know full eye contact with humans uh, uh, dogs prefer uh, uh, their viewpoints i can't remember the word uh, per perspective i think um so if I'm looking like this, I can only see here, up to here. A dog can see up to there, okay? So they don't really have to look at you in order to have attention on you. Um, but clickers and, you know, weaning them to toys and stuff should be, um, toys and play and praise should be the first option. Clickers and treats and 
all those should be the last option. Um, Chile. Uh, uh, Sumara is from Chile, South America. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, Merlin, I put in a dog door to my fence in yard and he plays with my other dog. This is working for me. Great. I don't need Tam Star, thank you. Bye. Stay safe. You, you too. And thank you so much. Uh, when will my 10 month old mini poodle just stay still and with me? <laughs> um, when? It depends. Uh, so you start with asking your puppy to learn to stay with for, with you 10 seconds. And every day, let's say today I start with 10 seconds. Tomorrow my goal is to stay for 12 seconds. Uh, next day is 20 seconds. The next day after that is 30 seconds. Next week, I want my, my expectation should be for my puppy to stay for half a, half a minute. Uh, and then the week after, I should expect my puppy to wait, stay for a minute, on and on. So every week or every day, you want to be asking your puppy to stay a little bit longer than the day before. If Even if your puppy stays one second more than la yesterday, that's a win. So it all depends on how much work you put on. Every day you have to practice with your puppy until you get to that point that your puppy or dog stays longer and longer. It all depends on how much work you put. Uh, I'll try that. Great. Uh, hi, sorry. Your videos are very helpful. Thank you. That's from Terra Rider Adventures. Thank you for being here and thank you for your feedback. That is great. Th great to know. Thank you. Uh, that's so many drug. <laughs> I know. Uh, that makes sense. Great. Uh, and we have one more question. Elizabeth Caruso. Yes, I hear your trainers claimed eventually you phase out the treats by giving intermittently or watch videos. I'll try again without treats. Thanks. I love your shows. You're welcome. Yes. So, you know, here's a good point that you brought up. Uh, you know, when they say fade out or phase out the treats, right? Why do we even start in the beginning with treats? I'll give you an example. So I used to run agility with my beagle many years ago. And when you were running in the, in the, um, for tri trials, you were running in the trials, uh, you were not supposed to have a collar on the dog, any food on you, anything with you, any toys, anything, right? You, you call them, the, you call that naked uh, run, naked run, right? So even if, whether it's agility, whether it's a comp a co competition uh, obedience, you're not supposed to have any food or any treats with you when you're running your dog. When you are show when you are showing up for the the competition, so you're supposed to be naked. The dog should supposed to be naked, even not even a collar, right? So if that's the goal then why are we training the dogs with the treats and collar and all that? What's the point of training a dog to perform naked and yet we are training them with all everything on? Isn't it better and healthier and much more natural and much more effective to train the dog naked as well? That's why I have a dog training course on my online course, which is called Naked Dog Training, because you're training, the, you're learning to how to train your dog without the use of treats, food, aversive tools, force, or even shock collars. So there it is. The healthiest dog tra training, uh, Naked Dog Training. I have an online course. 
you're welcome to join and learn how to train your dog without the use of treats, food, versive tools, any tools. You're just using play and praise to reward your dog. So it's there. Since I'm here, uh, we have leash training course as well. If you want to improve your dog's leash walk, if you want to learn what your dog's daily five essential needs are, it's you can take the a dog's five essential needs course. And if you have a puppy, you can join my puppy online training course. These are 15 day money back guarantee. If you don't like any of this course, you get your money back and give them a try. See if you like them or not. Uh, but I have courses that, you know, I teach dog owners to learn to train their dogs naked without anything, right? So you don't need to train the dog using f food or treats and then start managing the phase out because the phasing out is the problem also. Not many dog owners are capable of phasing out. They stick to that for the rest of the life, you know? I have dog owners who have five, seven-year-old dogs, and I ask them, can you ask your dog to sit? Oh, let me see, where is my treat? Oh, I got the treat in my pocket. Rover, sit. After seven years, they're still depending on treats, and the dog is still dependent on treats. If you don't give me treats, I'm not gonna listen to you. That is not healthy relationship. It's not natural. Dogs are not designed or uh, bred to live with humans like that. Dogs are, have been bred to work with humans, to live with humans naturally. Without, you know, we didn't breed them to bribe them. We didn't br breed them to give them food and ask them to do something. They were bred to do a task. And if they didn't do a task, they didn't come inside of the house. If you watch and learn the origin origin of dogs, that's the pro that was the process. The process was: if you do this task for me, then I'll let you come inside the the house and maybe eat my food as well. If you didn't, you stayed outside. You were useless, right? But we bred the dogs that they were useful. So the dog that you have today is useful dog. It's naturally bring you know we breed dogs because they're good animals. They do what we ask them to do. And you don't have to use treats to ask them to do something. Hopefully that helps. Uh, uh, Somara, uh, Zomara, what games do you recommend to play inside of the house? Good question. Um, so go to, let me share again the screen. Uh, go to my play uh, playlist. So again, you're in my channel, right? You're in my channel. There's a tab, it's called playlist. And you're going to choose this one. Mental and physical games for dogs to improve their behavior. These are the games that you can play with your dogs. Okay, so I can copy the link as well and share it with you. Games, I'll call it games. Can watch all those games and play indoors. All right, so it's on the chat line, chat area. Um, so small, small, e blessed. Hey, hi, how you doing? Um, one last question from Marilyn Hollywood. One last question: How can I get my Great Pyrenees Golden Border Collie? to stop pulling on my clothes to hurt me about is only eight months old, but getting big LOL. Uh, so that again, you know, the, that behavior is a hurting behavior. Again, yes, you're completely right. Yes, and, and your dog is telling you that I need mental physical stimulation. I need, first of all, mental stimulation. I need to do something. So. You know, play those games with your dog. If you go and watch those, uh, I have the link in the in the chat area. Watch those games, watch those videos, play those games with your dogs. These are games that not only are physically men stimulating, they mentally stimulate your dog. And also you get to train them meanwhile. So it gives you a good idea of also what I'm talking about, about play and praise reward system. 
And, and in those videos, I'm not using treats. I'm just playing with the dogs, games that you can play at home, and meanwhile train and get results. So this behavior of your dog is simply telling you, I need to play, I need to have activities, I need to have mental stimulation, I need to do something, right? So you have to give it something to do, right? And it's gonna start doing behaviors like that. It's gonna get worse if you don't do anything about it. So invest in half an hour of games with your dog and you'll see great results. Nevea, how can I stop my beagle running after me in the garden and trying to bite me? The same thing, <laughs> you know, same thing. They need mental, physical stimulation. Play those games. I have the link in the, in the, in the description. Play those games in the house, especially yeah. hmm? in the chat area, yes. Uh, sorry, in the chat area, the link is in chat area. In, especially in this day and age, especially in this time, that we are stuck home with our dogs, you know, they, you know, we are more, now I think you're getting more of what reality is of owning a dog. Owning, you know, myself on the weekends, which I'm home with my dog, I can tell my dog is, although, you know, Monday to Friday, she's with me, my puppy, she has play for playmates and she gets play and she gets to do this. We do training and all huh? at, the at the daycare. I, have, I also have a doggy daycare. So she plays at the dog with the dogs and all that. On the weekend, because there's no daycare, I can tell she is, it, it, I, I know what you feel. You know, you, it's too much, right? You know, they ask you. But that is the reality of owning a dog, you know. Once you have a good dog and you have trained your dog and you work with your dog, and give that gives a, a sense of what really dogs were bred for. They were bred to live with us 24-7. And they were we were not meant to go to work. If we used to go to work, the dog came with us. The dog sp spent... 24 seven with us. If we went to work, the dog was with us. If we came home, the dog was with us. And that's what you're getting now, especially that you're quarantined and you're staying home or you're forced to stay home. That's what it feels like to have a dog 24 seven. So 24 seven, you have, whether you're working or not, your dog should be involved with your, with your daily activities. For example, if I'm cooking in the kitchen for an hour, two hours, my puppy is by the kid in the by the kitchen or in the kitchen hanging out with me, cooking with me. It's not that I'm uh, saying don't come in the kitchen. I want my puppy to be in the kitchen with me because it's stimulating for her. Plus, I'm supervising her. You know, she's not causing any uh, problems in the house. She's right there. I can see her. I can and I know exactly what she's doing. I'm watching her. Uh, and I'm supervising you, right? And she's there and she's mentally learning, oh, this human is doing this, so I should be okay. If she's, I'm, if I'm chopping vegetables, the sound, she's getting used to it. If I'm making noise, she's getting used to it, socialization. So she gets exercise, uh, training, socialization, care and affection. My daily five essential needs, I'm providing a dog's daily five essential needs by being in the kitchen. If I'm sitting and eating my food, she's either in, a, in her bed or by the table, lying down, resting, and I'm supervising mentally, she's getting stimulated as well. So you have to involve your dog with your activities, but also you have to invest some time to train and play and completely have 100% uh, uh, focus on your puppy or your dog uh, because they are there for you. So you have to be there, there for them too. So it's not just having a dog and expecting everything to be normal. You have to put on the work. You have to play games. You have to train them. You have to walk them. You have to take care of them. 
they're there 24 seven with you, right? You have to invest time in improving everything that you can, uh, not only behavior, but their life as well. You're welcome and ant girl just passing by to say hi, hope you're well. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, yes, we're, we're doing well, we're fine, everything is good. Thank you everybody, I answered everybody's questions and it went very smoothly today and the live sh show, uh, I was able to share a lot of information and content with you. Thank you very much, hope you are going to have a great weekend. Uh, I will see you next time on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, I'll be live again. And tomorrow I'll be releasing a new video. And uh, hopefully you're going to watch it and learn a lot more about dog training without the use of uh, treats or food. And Mer Merlin say thank you. The answer is very helpful. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And enjoy your weekend. And until next time, have fun with your dog.